Thank you, Derek and John, for asking me to speak again at this prestigious meeting. I look back at pleasure many of the previous ones, and for instance, the picture at the top right hand of the slide shows a visit to University of Cape Town with the foothills of Table Mountain in the background. My talk today illustrates that exceptions are of exceptional interest, and we'll be talking about distributions mainly of plasma renin. And this is real data that we measured in almost 1,000 patients and allows us to define the two tails of the distribution. And my talk today concentrates on the low renin end where hypertension is due to excess salt and in particular due to primary aldosteronism. To define that, I show you this diagram in which renin is secreted from the kidneys and as well as stimulating vasoconstriction via angiotensin, also stimulates the production of aldosterone from the adrenal glands. And when these two parts of the system are disconnected, for instance, when there is a tumor in one of the adrenal glands, this results in autonomous production of aldosterone or primary aldosteronism. It's over 60 years since Jeremy Conn first described the condition, which used to be called Conn syndrome, and much has happened in the interval. But the techniques which we use today for diagnosis and for surgery are still largely invasive, and the adrenal vein sampling in surgery is a deterrent to patients to come forward. Fewer than 1% of patients are currently diagnosed, and there is an incentive to a better understanding of molecular knowledge about primary allosteronism to improve what is available. In the last few years, we have been testing whether metomidate PET-CT, a ligand which homes in on the enzyme which makes aldosterone, is an alternative to adrenal vein sampling. In a study of 140 patients, we now have the answer. The box in the middle shows the number of patients who are positive by either both techniques, the 34 in the yellow box, or by one only of the techniques, the blue and the green boxes. So roughly two thirds of patients overall do lateralize and proceed to surgery. And the results from the patient's cure from either primary aldosteronism and or hypertension shows that there's no diminution in accuracy by having the non-invasive technique. And indeed it met the preset non-inferiority margin and on all counts, was nominally slightly superior to adrenal vein sampling in its accuracy of detection. So that's good news. An additional application of metomidate PET-CT is our ability to localize as well as lateralize and, and release the power of radiofrequency ablation. If one looks at a sagittal view, it becomes apparent that the left adrenal sits very close to the stomach with scarcely a centimeter of clear pathway in between. And with an ultrasound probe in the stomach, especially in the hands of Steve Pereira, it is possible to, under ultrasound guidance, advance a needle into the adenoma, both to take tissue and to ablate the adenoma. The slide here shows three of the early patients in the study, the fabulous study funded by the British Heart Foundation, and shows that in each case, a hot adenoma on the top row becomes curled after the radiofrequency ablation procedure. This is the normal bifurcation in the middle patient. And these patients are also cured biochemically and clinically. So very promising, but still a way to go in this study. So lastly, the, the genotyping and what we can hope from this. Over the last 10 years, it has become apparent that 80 to 90% of the adenomas have a gain of function mutation in one of or other of these four main genes. And in this prospective study, we we're able to look at which of these is most likely to predict complete cure of hypertension and whether there is ethnic variation in their prevalence. On the left hand side here, you can see that the case in J5 mutation, the first one to be discovered by Rick Lifton in 2011, is the commonest in white patients in blue, whereas the calcium channel mutation, which we discovered in 2013, is commoner in black patients. If I remove from this, the patient, from this slide the patients who were not completely cured of hypertension, we are left mainly with the case in J5 
and GNAQ, as you can see on the right-hand side of the slide. And when in a multiple regression analysis, I correct for gender and age, other factors known to influence likelihood of cure, you can see that it's the case in J5 genotype, which is most strongly predictive. I would not want you to leave thinking that there's no point considering intervention in patients who are not likely to be completely cured of hypertension, because the main goal of surgery is to protect the heart. And on this slide, you can see that in patients who go to surgery in blue, there's a large reduction, 80% on average, in aldosterone. And this is paralleled by a, a mean of 50% reduction in brain natriuretic peptide reflecting cardiac strain. But in the future, we may think that patients who are not predicted by hybrid steroid measurement, for instance, to have a case in J5 mutation, would be better being offered ablation rather than surgery. So let me finish with a word on the gene in which we have recently found mutation, GNAQ and its sister, GNA11. Some years ago, we reported women who presented at times of high LH or pregnancy hormone with, with mutations in a gene beta-catenin or CTNNB1, which switched on the level of the pregnancy hormone receptor. But since then, we've realized that these mutations in beta-catenin on the top row here are in the patients presenting in pregnancy or sometimes puberty, always accompanied by a second mutation in a gene GN11 or GNAQ, which as the next slide reminds us, is the G protein which mediates the signal from angiotensin to aldosterone in the adrenal. This mutation in the presence of the beta catenin mutation always leads to a very high expression of the receptor for LH or HCG. On the left-hand side, you can see R10 patients where the LHCG is compared with the adjacent adrenal or a series of other tumors. And on the right-hand slide, this is data from our colleague in Paris, Christina Zanaro, where she additionally has a group of patients where there's a mutation of beta catenin but not the second mutation in GN11 or Q. And these patients do not present at times of puberty or pregnancy. So a specific phenotype from a specific genotype, and these patients are always completely cured of their hypertension by adrenalectomy. So in summary, primary aldosteronism causes five to 10% of hypertension, but is very rarely diagnosed. Newer techniques based on a molecular understanding of the condition allow us to visualize the tumors non-invasively and to proceed to thinking of radiofrequency ablation rather than surgery. And the ability to genotype a tumor and look for surrogates which predict the genotype in advance will allow us to be more selective and, and keep surgery for those who will be completely cured of hypertension and protect the heart in other patients by radiofrequency ablation. So I have a large number of people to thank for the work which I've shown you, both in my own group in London, elsewhere in the UK and abroad. Thank you.